a sign of spring, a sign of spring, a sign of spring. Hi friends, today we're thinking about springtime and we're thinking especially about all the different things growing up out of the ground, all of the seeds planted deep in the ground waiting to grow and become whatever they're going to be. I have some seeds here that I was going to show you. This is a seed pod and this is a bean. Well, I want to show you this. This is a bean that's also a seed. Did you know beans were seeds? This is a seed oyster. After people eat oysters, people who eat oysters put these back on the beach and new um, baby oysters attach to those and grow new shells. In the seed pod, I'll show you, I'm going to break it open. And here's a little seed that came out of it. Where did it go? A tiny little seed and there are hundreds of them in here. Let's see if I can show you this. Whoa, do you see them falling all over my paper? There they are. So anyway, we're thinking about seeds this week and our and our project is going to have to do with seeds. So you can either find a real seed or imagine a seed. But first we want to say thank you to our sponsors and our partners for planting seeds of kindness and helpfulness in the world by supporting Plato and Pierce County and um, Green Trike. My name is Cheryl Jones and before we get started on our project, I want to introduce my friend Shannon Rojecki. She's going to read you a story about signs of spring. So thank you, Teacher Shannon, for being here. And let's go ahead and listen to the story that she's going to share with us. Hi, friends. Cheryl, thank you so much for inviting me to play today. I happen to bring one of my favorite stories to share together. I have really been enjoying these sunny days and spring is just around the corner. The story that I brought to share today is called and then it's spring and the author of the story is Julie Fogliano and the illustrator, the one who drew the pictures in this book or painted the pictures maybe is Aaron Steed and then it's spring. This looks like the character of our story, this friend seems to be wearing a red hat and a red scarf and maybe even some red mittens. Brr, looks cold. First, you have brown all around. You have brown. Ooh, and then there are seeds. I'm going to hold the picture really close to my screen so you can see that tiny seed. It looks like one seed going in the ground. Oh, and it also looks like a wagon full of gardening supplies. Ooh, and a wish for rain. We notice all of our characters looking to the sky and this friend has put on their yellow raincoat hoping for some rain. And then it rains. All oh, the water coming out of the sky, soaking into that soil. And it is still very brown, but a hopeful, very possible sort of brown. And I see the birds even enjoying some of that rain there in the puddles. <laughs> Ooh, and is that a little green? Mm, no, it's just brown, sort of brown. No green yet. Then it is a week, a whole week, seven days. Mm, and more seeds. 
and you worry about those little seeds. I wonder what, what our friend would be worrying about. What could happen to the seeds? Hmm. And if maybe it was the birds, oh, I know that about birds. They do like to eat seeds, don't they? Or maybe it was the bears, bears, and all that stomping. Because bears can't read signs that say things like, please do not stomp here. Please do not stomp here. There are seeds, and they're trying. And then it is one more week, seven more days. And the brown, still brown, has a greenish hum that you can only hear if you put your ear to the ground and close your eyes. There is a lot happening underground. I wonder if our friend can hear it. What does it sound like? What does the ground sound like? <laughs> and then it is one more week. Seven more days. Seeds are taking some time to grow. They... And a sunny day, that sunny day that happens right after that rainy day. Oh, I notice our friend here, it hit the, cl their clothes have changed. They're, they went from long pants to short pants and long sleeves to short sleeves. And you walk outside to check on all that brown. But the brown isn't around. And now, what color do you notice now? Mm-hmm. Green. All around, you have green. Let's see. And... My friends, thank you for sharing a beautiful story with me. I am going to go ahead and put on my binoculars. First, I'm going to peek out my window, see if I'm seeing any green. And you know what? I'm starting to see some green right outside the windows of my house. And I'll put my binoculars back on. And I'm going to look for Cheryl. Cheryl, are you out there, Cheryl? And here we are back again. And like I said, you can imagine a seed if you want, or you can go and look for seeds outside or in your kitchen. And for our project today, what we're going to do is we are going to think about what our seed would grow. And that's an interesting thing about seeds, isn't it? Is that you can't tell what's going to grow necessarily from looking at them. So you can imagine a seed or find a seed and think about, what is my seed going to grow into? Is it going to be something big or small? Is it going to be a tree or a flower? What would bird seed grow into? Is it going to be a star or a rainbow? Could you grow a plant or something that has um, an animal on it? Anything you can imagine is what you're going to want to make with thinking about your seeds. The tools I'm going to use today are um, a paintbrush and some water, a fine tip sharpie, and some watercolor paint. And I'm just going to imagine what I would want to grow and draw a picture of that. So let's just kind of work together with that now and you can think about what you want to draw. The reason I like the Sharpie is because I can draw something and then paint over the top of it and my black lines will still be there. So I wonder what kind of a plant I would want to grow with my seed. Maybe, maybe I'll make a really tall and curvy 
kind of a, a plant. Maybe I'll have a leaf on there. I'm trying to decide if I want a flower. Ah, oh, I have an idea. Maybe I'm going to make my, my plant go down. Are you making something now, too? I'm going to make mine look kind of like a flower, I think. thinking that I want my flower to also look kind of like an animal. You can imagine anything you can think of and you could make a whole garden worth of plants if you wanted to. And you can also, if you want, Go look at the plants that are growing around outside now that the sunshine is coming back and it's getting warmer. The days are getting longer. You might just want to try and see what you can draw that you can see out in the world. You know what? I think I want my leaf to be green. I mean to be blue. A leaf doesn't always have to be green, especially not an imaginary leaf. Do you remember that when you're painting with watercolor, you do a color and you swish your brush in here so that you get that color off and you can go to the next color? Maybe that's something you want to do, play with the watercolors. Or maybe you want to draw with markers or colored pencils or finger paint. Man, there's so many different ways that you can do this. Anyway, friends, I wonder what kind of creations you're going to come up with. I think it would be really fun to see what you're thinking about and what you might like to do. I always love to see friends' projects and ideas. So I'm starting to make kind of a kitty flower <laughs> with a blue leaf and that seems like a fun thing for me to do. So we're making pictures together and I just want to let you know that if you like doing this you can explore it even further by looking for our Green Chikes Cares kits and they have an actual seed to plant and some dirt and a Hot. some tools like this watercolors and sharpies and so if you're having fun doing this and would like to there's an opportunity to buy a more, um, a more complete kit to work with and thank you for coming to play today and listen to teacher Shannon's story and we'll see you next time bye, -bye.